So thank you so much for being wherever you are and joining us on this morning, afternoon, or evening for the human miracle. And this is, guys, 35 of 52. So we are joining, actually, Manu Marielle is joining us, I shall say, in bringing us the Vibrant Vitality Triangle. I'm really, really excited about this one, uh, the seven ways harmonizing these balances for perfect health. I'm sort of reading my notes, so sorry for that bit. Uh, and I also want to say that my favorite thing lately has been the word balance, you know, sort of how to do that. Um, <laughs> in many, many aspects of life. And so we'll be talking tonight or Manu will be giving us the information and we shall be doing our notes on the chemical balance, the mechanical balance and the electrical balance. And I thought I knew what these were and I'm quite sure that I don't. <laughs> So <laughs> we're also going to be getting the practices to integrate in a day-to-day -day way in our life to stay on track and perhaps even kickstart to regenerate our vibrant vitality. So I think we shall, as they used to say in the cartoons, away we go. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone with us I know knows Manu. So without any further ado, shall we bring on the Powerful and beautiful Manu Marielle. Thank you. This this way we go reminded me of Paw Patrol. That, that <laughs> we are like the so fun. Paw Patrol. <laughs> and Sunny, this is um, like all other human miracle sessions, which is uh, you represent an archetype of humans around the world. So if there are any particular questions that come through um, or questions, you people, you know, everyone that's here watching, you can also put them on chat. Uh, I usually have these on Facebook Live. And for some reason, this whole piece about the three balances and my guidance is not to go Facebook Live on this. So it's only going to be on my YouTube channel. Um, so let's, where we go. Okay, um, you know, with these uh, with these sessions, the human miracle sessions, I um, there's some aspects I have implemented, but pulling it together under these different headings um, in a particular way uh, and then communicating it usually literally happens the night before, and then I show up with those few few pointers. And then I literally allow spirit to communicate uh, whatever chooses to come through, um, uh, through my human form. So uh, let's look at the seven ways of harmonizing these balances. So it's as if the balance itself is not the act of balance. It's like a label. Electrical balance is a label as opposed to balancing yourself. It's electrical balance, mechanical balance. Now, because in my world, Sunny, you said that balance is like a word du jour uh, for you somewhat these days. Um, it used to be the, for the longest time for me also, um, especially when, you know, when I became a single mom and it was like, just, it was such a, it was a quest and such a deep desire to find balance somehow, you know? Um, and I, I remained out of balance uh, throughout until I went on my spiritual awakenings and then realized that actually this whole quest for balance is what keeps us out of balance because it's like, you know, being on a, on a seesaw, remember, in the playground. And if you're standing in the middle with your foot on either side attempting to balance, you're like, you know, constantly uh, sort of your, your center of gravity is a little bit <laughs> destabilized and you're like, you know, a little bit out of balance. It's uh, the, the key is harmony. So my session here is not necessarily about finding the three balances. It's more about harmonizing the three balances that are there. So the first way we, we zoom in on, the first three ways we zoom in on each one, uh, electrical balance. So let's, um, you know, our last, this is the part two of, um, this uh, vibrant vitality triangle. In the first part, I talked about the uh, this triangle is all about, um, it's like an electron deficiency 
uh, is the condition that arises when this triangle, which is represented by the three balances, is out of harmony. And why is that electron um, electron deficiency such a such a problem? It is what it does is uh, it's like you know every we have a cell. Every cell has a nucleus. If we if you remember back whatever we studied about cells, you have a nucleus, and then around the nucleus, so the nucleus has the proton and neutrons, and around the nucleus is an electron which is moving. So you know, I talk about that we are vibrational beings. So it is the electron movement that gets the entire cell to also be be vibrating and moving. So if you have electron deficiency, it causes all forms of stuckness, and it has it it results in a variety of acute conditions as well as uh, chronic conditions. So. That's just like a, a high level statement. You can watch the one hour session that we did last time where I really did go into this electron deficiency aspect. Today, I'm really going to go into practically what is it, what are the things that you can do to um, you know, get your electron deficiency addressed whilst also harmonizing these three balances. So let's take the electrical balance. Let's so that we understand what, where, um, does this electrical balance show up? You know, what condition do we have to know that it's an electrical balance condition? So for example, heart failure. Heart failure is an electrical balance issue. You know, a heart attack on the other hand is a mechanical issue, it's different. So um, the, how do you deal with electrical balance? You know, the the the, you know, I talk in this whole human miracle series, I talk about we have been gifted by the divine, a whole host of completely free of charge medicines that are there. And we have, you know, natural, completely free of charge, um, you know, emergency wards if we choose to go to. For electrical balance harmonization, earth, is uh, really supports you with that. So zero voltage, getting into a zero volt state, avoiding electrical fields, you're, you're able to get that electrical balance. You can really reclaim that. So how do you do that in practical terms? So one very simple thing that you can do is switch off all electrical devices at night before you go to bed. Um, so, I mean, we are so used to having our mobile phones next to us. Put it in airplane mode. If you must have it for the purposes of, of a clock. Remember, we used to have the, that tiny little alarm clock that we all used to have, you know, and then it all shifted to phones. So now we don't have that. And we have these phones that we use as a clock or worse still, that watch. The dreadful watch that everyone wears right on their wrist. <laughs> Talk about causing these voltage malfunctions at a cellular level. So take that off. I mean, take, you know, turn, put, put your phones on airplane mode. Um, switch off as many switches. So even if you, even if uh, like a, a plug point that you may have, the plug may be, may be in and this, and, um, Sometimes there is no plug-in, so you, you just don't look at the switch. But when the switch is switched on, there is electricity that is moving. So just make sure that your switches are switched off in your home, at least. You know, so this whole thing that I talk about, you know, get into a state of rest. Ideally two hours, but at least an hour before you actually lie down and sleep. And I'm going to talk about this whole lie down piece in a in a moment. It's one of the ways that you you harmonize these balances. But at least an hour before, switch off. Now we do have a a situation where you know uh, people talk about sleep apnea, and you know I also got diagnosed with sleep apnea, so I carry on carry the, the CPAP machine. Um, okay, I can't switch it. I can't switch it off, uh, and I'm sure at some point that'll all be gone, and I'll be able to switch it off. But we're so used to having bed lights and 
all of these switches that are right there. You know, we surround ourselves even more with these switches. So do whatever you can to at least uh, switch off as many of the electrical devices as you can. Because it is this electrical switches that are on. Now, the, the good news is when you switch these off, you have quite an extended time at night when you sleep where you are not, you're, you know, your electrical balance is being harmonized quite nicely. Ideally, you'll find a way of even sleeping on a zero volt mat. And you can get these quite easily. At least in the US, they're readily available and they're actually really quite friendly to sleep on. You do get a zero volt mat. You can buy it in India also. It's a little bit thick, so it's not as comfortable as the ones that you get in the US, um, but it is certainly available. And you can also create your own. Now, I'm not here to tell you how to create your own uh, because it is a little bit of an elaborate system, uh, but in India, you have to find ways in which people can create these things of their own. Now, the ideal thing would be so if you're sleeping on a zero volt mattress throughout the night, you've got good six to eight hours of being in this zero volt state. Your body has got a good chance of recuperating and getting that, you know, getting that, getting that electro, electrical balance in harmony. If you're not able to be on a zero volt mat, then at least switch off the electrical devices so that you are avoiding electrical fields. So at least through the night, you don't have those electrical fields stimulating you. You know, it's interesting. I'd heard about all of this and I thought, well, I've got to actually test it out. This whole, and there are voltmeters. You can, you can actually check the voltage that you're on. So I bought a voltmeter because I was actually I bought. I had uh, Justin, who many of you know, had actually um, brought um, when he visited me in India. He brought with him this electrical, um, the the zero volt mat. Um, so I did use the voltmeter to see if I actually am sleeping on the on zero volt, and it was zero volt. I took off the mat, and it was like really buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Um, you know, there were there were particular readings coming out. The, the same thing happens. You you switch off your phone, put it on, or you leave your phone switched on. I mean, have it on airplane mode. That is the the safest way. Or switch it off is even better. But if you have it switched on on the bed and you're not looking at it, it's in silent mode. The voltmeter will will capture. It'll make that noise and it'll capture the level of voltage that you're sleeping on. Now, another thing that really helps, um, and I have, I use both when I'm in Dubai. I don't necessarily have it when I'm traveling. I do have a magnetic mattress. And I do have a magnetic insole that I have in my shoes. So all of that really helps you um, harmonize your electrical balance. You can buy magnetic insoles. I use Niken, um, you know, I've used Niken for several decades and I really love it. It's quite portable. So I have that. And you can get so many different things in terms of magnetic. You can get magnetic jewelry, which is also really great. Um, there was, there was at one point, there was quite a spread of having this copper band around your, around your wrist. That also is very much about this electrical balance harmonization. Because when you have that, that copper is a really great conductor. So if you have that copper band and you take 40 minutes that you're walking on, on bare, bare feet on bare earth that isn't pumped with chemicals or pesticides, you're really getting that, elect, you know, that electron deficiency is beautifully being redressed. You're being harmonized quite nicely. Find your ways, find your ways. There is a lot of support that is available to us, you know, and we are so fortunate to have the all of these, you know, online ways in which we can order. We don't have to go to a shop or find one. It can all happen online. 
but making sure that you do harmonize this electrical balance is important. The easiest thing, switch off all electrical devices, ideally two hours before you actually lie down and sleep, but at least an hour before you sleep. So the electron deficiency disorder is addressed in, with this and you start getting into that zero volt. There's something else that I wear actually. I don't know if, um, you know, this looks like a little crystal, but it isn't. It's actually a frequency. Um, and my friend who made it actually is crossed over. So um, it was an experiment, but this is another really phenomenal thing. When I got the voltmeter next to me, it was, I was at zero volt and it actually looks quite pretty. It's a, Pretty cool. So I'm going to figure out how to get something like this manufactured that you can just wear quite easily. So find ways. There are lots and lots and lots of solutions that are available. And if nothing is available that costs, if 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 all of that costs money and it isn't quite easy, Earth is available. You know, we live on an Earth ship. So go find some Earth. If you can't find some Earth, you know, if you have uh, if you have potted plants and you're not chemically infusing them with anything, even holding, you know, that good quality soil that is so rich in microbiome and, um, and also, um, you know, earth itself allows that um, electrical uh, balance harmonization to happen. When, I, when we do the beyond meditation and I guide you to connect your, your cord to the core of the earth and I ask you to scan your body, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally getting you to see everything. Everything is a vibration and vibration originates from intention. So when you have an intention that you are connecting your spine to the core of the earth, the spine is a very, very rich, uh, has got a very rich presence of, of, of your nerves. Nerves are very directly impacted by electron deficiency disorder. That's where you see them see this condition uh, play out first. So, you know, in your meditation, like really connecting yourself to the core of the earth with this golden cord, I sometimes bring in metals. I sometimes bring in, bring in crystals. Crystals originate from the earth. The first thing that every crystal has is a big dollop of uh, earthing um, ability. And some of these crystals are even stronger than others, like tourmaline is like that, or any of these, these ancient meteors like shungite. I mean, that, that you can get shungite little bracelets like this. These things cost money and you can buy them. They're not that, they're relatively inexpensive and you can also have it completely free of charge. It's available to us. And so the conditions like heart failure is an electrical thing. Now let's look at the second way. Second way is physical or mechanical balance, right? Now heart attack is a physical failure. A blockage in the heart, tumors, cancers, stones, they're all, they're all these mechanical balance uh, failures because you can actually physically see them. So just like the electrical balance, for that to be harmonized, you require, ele you require electricity or the lack of electricity. That's the way to address that. You can't drink something or, or, any, or anything like that. It's like, you know, you get, you walk on the earth because earth really harmonizes the electromagnetic, um, you know, waves. It's, it's rich in electromagnetic waves. So the earth, supports you so you you address the electrical balance through electricity itself if you like to look at it that way so physical balance is to be addressed by physical actions so now this is where uh, you know your your uh, excreting organs play a very important role because why does this physical um, failure that is caused by this mechanical imbalance occur. There's increased toxicity, increased acidity, increase in debris that is accumulated. 
that's that is what gives rise to that inflammation and all of that so here are ways in which you can address that so the hot water immersion where i which i i've talked about uh, you know in various sessions what are, what does it do it's a, it so the skin is a third kidney and you have to activate the skin to operate as a third kidney. So if uh, a lot of the time when there is, if we are not properly hydrated or our, our diet has been of a certain kind, or there's a lot of emotional baggage that has accumulated like a lot of pent up anger and stuff, it starts to have an impact on the kidneys. For example, kidneys are not excreting that well. So it's really great to get that third kidney activated which is your skin. Now, how do you activate your, your third kidney, which is your skin? There are a couple of ways in which you can do that. One is by immersing yourself in hot water. Ideally, you will immerse yourself in hot water up to this, this point. So you like in a bathtub, you can lie down. The hot water has to be a certain level, degree level. And ideally you would maintain it that way. So about 38, between 38 to 40 degrees. Now for you, if for you to activate your kidney and then keep it activated, uh, what is, and if you've got a particular condition, you are required to do this for at least two hours a day. If you don't have a condition and you're doing it just for the health of your kidney, then you can do it for half an hour to 40 minutes a day. One hour a day is a really good sweet spot where you sit in the bathtub. Now, how do you sit in the bathtub for an hour and continually maintain the temperature? How do you even know what the temperature is? Do you remember during the COVID time, they used to have that gun-like thermometer? So if you went to certain places, they would point that gun towards your forehead and get the temperature reading. That's what I use. You know, so I just get it over, my, over the water and I have a sense of what the temperature is. Really what you're doing here is you're using a combination of heat and water. And you're also using, which I'm going to talk more about in, in a, it, because it's a very specific way, you're using pressure, differential. All of that supports your, your skin as a third kidney to get activated. Now, the exciting thing is you have your two kidneys. They're really tiny, literally, you know, not even this, even smaller than this. The skin is quite a large organ that we have. It's a very powerful support of, for excreting out a buildup of toxicity in your body, doing this hot water immersion. And you don't have to, to necessarily do it all the time, but if you feel that added support is called for, this is a really great, great way. Now there are other there are other ways as well which are physical because this is a physical failure mechanical balance the lack of harmony in mechanical balance is a physical failure a change in posture is also something that can help so here you're using physical actions uh, supported by the gravity of the earth and the heat of sunshine sunlight so, um, you know, in, in the US is where I came across it, but I realized in India, we have it, they do it all the time. Uh, in, in, in the US, it's called slant bowls. Have you come across that, Sunny? Yeah, I have so, actually. Yeah, I mean, you won't do, you won't use a slant board if you've got a high blood pressure condition, but if you don't have that, then it's quite a nice thing to have where you're sort of lightly slanted like that. So it's a board that you, Put on on the one side the surface is a little bit high on the other side it's down it's not like this it's just literally very lightly slanted and your head is down and your feet are up and you don't have to be on that for more than 20 minutes maximum half an hour but what it does is it allows your your blood to flow wherever it is required to flow Especially, you know, as humans, we are, we've learned to stand up vertically 
So it's quite nice to have that blood flow into your head and your scalp and this whole region above the chest sometimes requires special, special um, attention. And it's very much a part of, uh, you know, redressing the mechanical, um, uh, mechanical balance, harmonization. May I jump in here? Yes. Uh, a couple of things. I, I have two questions and one comment. So with the slant board, those can be expensive or, you know, you have to store them, whatever. Another thing that I do that is so fun, and I'm going to have to take a picture because I don't know how to explain it exactly. But you know, those balls that they sometimes use in Pilates or whatever, they're about maybe this size. Um, and kids use them for like handball. They're a little lighter than those. You, you can even see them in drugstores and stuff in the big bin. You sort of put them under your um, like coccyx and you can actually just have it be there and your legs go up, but you're balancing on the ball. It is the funnest thing ever. It feels like, and it looks a little scary because you think you're going to like fall off or whatever, but it's the funnest, funnest thing ever. And it's the same as this, but your legs are straight up. So I'll take a picture of me or someone doing it. Yeah. And it costs like two bucks, but it's something you can even take like in your suitcase or something, but yeah. it really does what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll do, so it, and it's just super fun and you could just lay there even chatting with your kids or your boyfriend or whoever. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I love it. Love it. And then I was going to ask you a question about, about two things, chemicals or bleach or whatever those things are in hot tubs at, at health clubs, because I'm always sort of wanting to go there, but then that makes me not go. And then also skin sloughing, skin, you know, this kind of thing. So I thought if you would like to address those two. Yeah. Um, so the the this the chemicals in these various tubs and swimming pools and all of that, it causes, they do cause chemical in, in a chemical imbalance. So it introduces another thing that you have to address, but there, are, there is a different way in which you can address that, um, the chemical mm -hmm. uh, lack of balance. So I also don't actually use swimming pools or um, tubs anywhere else. You know, if I, if I do have one, I mean, I have it, I have a tub at home, so that's fine. Um, but if I'm in a hotel and there's a tub, I would do, I would use it. Um, otherwise I, I don't actually go into a public thing because of mm -hmm. that um so that's just something to be aware of the main thing is that you know that your upper body needs to be sort of like that you know so the, your upper body needs to be like that right so if you can find a way and it could be by arranging pillows or cushions in such a way that you can do that you know find your own low-cost ways of achieving that but remember, if you've got high blood pressure, then having a lot of blood going into your head is not that great an idea. There are many yoga postures that do this also, um, you know, allow you to, to do this. And if you're doing a yoga routine and it's, a, it's, a, it's an hour or a 90 minute routine, during that time, you're, you're doing a series of postures. It's not just one posture. That also can help this whole uh, mechanical thing. It's, it's because it's so, it's physical. So, that's really what you're looking at. Using a change of posture, using um, heat and gravity to bring about uh, a pressure differential. Those are the things that you're working with. Uh, I do find it a very, for myself, I find it a useful practice to keep my third kidney activated as, as a kidney, which is my skin. You know? Um, that really does help. So, and body sloughing, you know, uh, different yeah. salts and things, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that that also is really great. That helps, uh, like salt, for example. Um, just just taking salt, and I mean, ideally, you would have some little bit of a better quality salt rather than a bunch of chemicals um, that also is um, you know, sold as table salt. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sea salt or um, rock salt. Um, I, I like putting a little bit of lavender in it just because it, it is, it's lovely and anti-inflammatory. Uh, if, for example, I'm traveling a lot and I'm in a part of the world where um, it's quite useful to protect yourself from bacteria or uh, you know, mosquitoes and stuff, 
So I might add some citronella to that salt. You know, uh, and sometimes if I feel there's a lot of dryness in my skin, I might add a little bit of coconut oil to it. Not a lot, oh. really not a lot is needed there. But then you take that salt and you rub it on your skin. If you feel that there is like a buildup of toxicity in you, you can mix in the salt a little bit of soda bicarb. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I also might add a capful of apple cider vinegar. But that, that then starts to, um, apple cider vinegar is interesting because it helps the microbiome on your skin as well. That mm -hmm. bit of that fermented mm -hmm. piece that's there. But not everybody, you know, for some people, it, um, ACV or apple cider vinegar can cause itching. So you be, you be sensitive to where you're at, but certainly salt and, and mixed with a little bit of uh, uh, baking soda or soda bicarb, um, added to it some anti-inflammatory essential oils, um, like lavender is, is one such beautiful oil uh, or anti-bug oils. But it's so brilliant adding a bit of citronella to it. You enjoy the scrubs, so all the dead skin is coming off. You know, you're actually quite nicely, um, you know, bringing about a little bit of chemical harmonization without, without necessarily having too much salt or too much sugar. Anti-inflammatory piece is also there. And, you know, if you activated your skin as your third, as your kidney, then you're actually directly nourishing that kidney function as well. Uh, it's quite special. Um, that um, this experience. So thank you for asking that. Now there's something mm. else which is also really helpful, which is called body brushing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Now mm -hmm. you can get these body brushes, really important to buy one with natural bristles. And I'm saying buy because many of you here are from the US or Europe. So, and many people who watch this are from those parts of the world. So you can buy these things. Now in India, you may not get a, you may not be able to buy a body brush, and people may not even be able to afford it. So loofah scrapes, loofah uh, scrubs are great. Loofah is a type of uh, uh, gourd when you sun, sun dry it, and in India, um, people will know when you sun dry it, it becomes like a little bit of a mesh. So you can use that. You can also use towels, and if you don't have anything, you don't need to scrub like crazy. Remember, the, the, the body brush is very light because it's activating the lymphatic system. It's really getting your lymphatic system moving. So you're literally just going like this, like this, and you're going towards your heart. Where, where the way you're, you're, you're brushing yourself is towards your heart, towards your heart. And it doesn't have to be multiple repetitions either. Just once is fine. As long as you have a rhythm of moving a little, like going for a walk or something, you'd literally just need to go, you know, and you, you know, through your body, towards your heart, towards your heart, towards your heart. That's all you're I, doing. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic because I didn't know about the toward your heart. Uh, and this can also be legs, feet, Absolutely. you know, really Absolutely. kind of getting a bit of a scrub going high yeah. Um and it's also a moment of self-love for me. Like, I'm just kind of like, thank you, hands, for doing what you've been doing. Or if I'm working with my feet, thank you for carrying me all around the land, you know, this sort of thing. Yeah. And then also with the legs. So that would be up toward the heart, your stomach, you know, sort of under here, under your arms, yeah. all yeah. the lymph areas to just sort of. So it's a bit of a massage, but not too rough, you're saying, you know, not too not strong not enough at all now if you don't have a towel you don't have a brush you don't have a loofah use your fingers and you're literally just going like this like it feels like a little bit tingly that's all you're doing mm. okay so if you did this lid this thing and it's slightly tingly you see that that tingle continues even after your finger has moved from there so yes. you're activating your limbs that's what you're doing mm. okay mm. So the main thing is mechanical balance is very much a physical condition. Once you understand that, you know, things like heart attacks and any tumors and stuff are related to mechanical um, balance harmonization, you use that physical ways of addressing all of those types of conditions. Okay. 
Uh, hydration plays a very important role. And you know my way of hydration, a sip at a time, a sip at a time, a sip at a time. Now, um, it, it may be that you're really thirsty. And in the past, when you've been really thirsty, you've like glugged water down, like one glass, two glass. So then you have to go a sip at a time. It feels like, my God, how long is this going to continue? You will be so surprised when you have a sip at a time, that conscious awareness to water. And if you consciously, rather than thinking, oh my God, how long is this going to take? That conscious awareness of taking that sip of water, you allow yourself to also thank it as it's going down. The moment you feel that the water has gone down into your stomach, you're ready to have the next sip then you can have a whole glass. But look, that becomes a meditation. You know, it's really awesome. A matter of a few minutes and you are re-centering yourself with water, which carries messages. It's an automatic amplifier that happens. And it's very much a physical, supports you physically. Let's look at the third one. I'll have Before, quickly, yes. may I just say with the water, one of the challenges that we have, I believe, is that we start a little too late to be drinking. So when you're saying people are glug glug, it's because we're too, you know, we've sort of gotten past the bit. So if we if we're sort of sipping water bit by bit throughout the day. And I learned that being a singer that, you know, it's not a good idea to glug glug or if you're you know, again, on my show, not a good idea. So starting earlier in the day and just sort of doing that. So it's sort of always going on. Just don't let ourselves get that thirsty because that's when we're actually dehydrating. Yeah, yeah. Very correct? Good. I mean, is that Very correct? Absolutely. Very good yeah. point. And that and that happens when you have a sip at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, it also gets me to talk about another piece with the context of hydration so when I'm traveling in India or I'm traveling in Bali or parts of the world where decent toilets are not necessarily that easy to come by or they are, you know, quite a, quite a distance away. Oh, so then <laughs> <laughs> you have to address it and you are thirsty. So, so the way to work with that is, look, there's a lot of moisture that you're surrounded by. You, we would not survive more than a few minutes if we weren't surrounded by moisture, okay? We are surrounded by water. So the way to do this is to make your tongue like a little bit of a straw, okay? So you literally go, like you're just folding it and you're only breathing in through that, that piece. So you're going, like that, mouth closed, breathe out. You will be so surprised. I mean, maybe it's picking up some moisture from the air, but really what it's doing is we have a lot of water. Our mouth is actually, it's got a lot of water that's moving all the time. So this way, what you're doing is you're just literally, it is like a sip at a time equivalent, but it's like micro sips of water that's sloshing around in the form of moisturizing the inside of your mouth. But you're literally getting those tiny little nano sips of water. And with your breath, you're directing it inside you. And it doesn't take more than doing it three times and you're fine. The dryness goes away in your throat. I mean, it's a very practical issue that I have to deal with a lot of the times. When I'm in, when I'm traveling from a main city in India to, you know, up in the mountains or something that I want to go and I'm I'm guided to go or whatever, uh, so it really helps. Okay, <laughs> let's come to chemical balance. <laughs> what time is it? Okay, chemical balance. Chemical balance, so, so things like blood sugar imbalance, like diabetes, um, uh, coma, when people go into a coma, or uh, if they feel um, you know, the blood isn't clotting, or you have a lot of bruises, bruising that occurs. These are all conditions of chemical failure, chemical balance 
uh, lack of harmony in chemical balance. So how do you address that? The way to address that is through water, living water and living foods. That is the ideal way of addressing chemical balance harmony. Now, how do you deal with living water? Living water is, I mean, there are, there are various machines that are also available to get that ripple effect in the water. And if you are you know, in nature and there's a stream flowing, then of course, that is certainly a way in which you can do it. I remember in Boulder, there's, uh, uh, I have various friends in Boulder and there, there's, they often had this person who would go to um, the mouth of certain rivers and actually get water and they would all get that water from that person. Um, living water, another way of getting living water is if you can find a way where let's say you have like a pot made out of mud or clay and you put in um, some stones, which could be stones from riverbeds that are there some stones in there, a little bit of a copper wire, a, a small piece of tourmaline in it, or a, or a small piece of amethyst in it, that's there. Um, and um, the other thing that's really good is, um, I'm just, uh, there's a particular type of seed and I'm like, it's just, I'm blanking out on that seed. That I, that I also put in the water. And I'm not getting it right now, but I will get it and I'll share. Um, but if you don't have the seed, it doesn't matter. I mean, all of this stuff is, is actually pretty good. Uh, if you can get um, some twigs, dry twigs are quite good. I, I, I tend to source licorice tw twigs, for example, you know, and I, and I clean it properly. And then I, I put a, a couple of licorice twigs. So I have a pot in which there is this water. Now, um, and, and that starts to become living water. Now, if you can have or parts where there's a, there are, they are tiered up, like there's one on the top and one at the bottom. And if you're able to get, um, create a mechanism, which not everybody can. Um, so that's why I'm not talking about it very much, but if you can, then getting that water to move brings that memory back of it it coming out of a stream. But if you can't, you have it in a pot and you allow, like use a tap that turns it on. So then the water is coming out of this, some movement that is there in that water and you've got all of these little pieces in it. You don't need a lot of stones. You don't need a lot of twigs. It's just a little bit that's there. You're bringing that memory back. You can bless that water. It starts to become living water. Those of you who have my my water painting coasters, um, I haven't merchandised them yet, but you know it will happen. I think the next twelve months, there's some stuff happening in my world that will make these things more readily available to people. That also can help get that water back into living water. There's another really really great way of doing it, which is exposing the water to sunlight. You know, mm -hmm. so. You can have water in a pot and you cover it up with a, a muslin cloth. Uh, and then you, you expose it to the sun. And in you know, early morning sun, just for a few hours, that makes a very big difference. That also very beautifully infuses water with aliveness again. There's something else that, uh, you know, a lot of our filtered water and stuff, uh, is, is mineral deficient. Adding a, a spoonful of minerals is not really an ideal thing, but here's something that can be done, which is if you have rock salt, it's called sole, S-O-L-E, and you can make your own sole. And what, you make it once, you make, you make um, you know, um, a, a 250 ml of sole that can last you for God knows how many weeks. Uh, but what is sole? You put rock salt in it, like real rock, uh, salt that is in the rock form. You fill that up with water. You can fill it up with your dead filtered water if that's what you want to do. That's fine. You know, and then expose this to the sun for at least like, you know, three, four days. You expose it into the sun. The bottle is covered with a lid. That sunlight going through the glass 
Uh, and what you're doing here is you're getting that, uh, getting the salt, this water becomes a saturated solution of this salt that has been activated by sunlight. Then what you do is whatever, like in your, in your bottle, a liter of water, you put one teaspoon of this. Teeny, teeny teaspoon in a liter is what, you, what you're required to do. And that immediately livens up the water and it enriches it with the exact amount of minerals that you require. So you can get, you can get these, uh, you know, rocks of Himalayan salt, which has got many more minerals than many other salts. So you can certainly do that. So you're never drinking that saturated solution by itself. You're just taking a little bit of it and then transforming that whole liter of water. Extremely helpful. If you have this issue of cramping that occurs, Sole, brilliant solution, brilliant solution. There are times, for example, when I'm having raw, uh, I'm having living foods and I'm really focused on having more food of, or more of my food as raw, I would even wash. Like before I actually chop the salad, I've cleaned up the, the, the vegetables. The last wash I would do with the sole water. And I don't then add salt to the vegetables, but you can if you want, but I don't, I don't need to add salt to the, the vegetables. Uh, but it's it's got that amazing, amazing infusion of sunlight and all the minerals in it. If I'm making a salad dressing, instead of adding salt, I might add a spoonful of sole in it. When I make soups and stews, because I just do this, you know, uh, regularly, and I've been doing it for, I don't know, several decades now. And it, it was Giuliano's, the raw chef, that introduced me to this whole idea of sole. And then I deep, did a deep dive under uh, research into what does this all even mean? And I understood it. Cafe Gratitude, they use Sole all the time. Those of you in, who are in California. It's a very, very powerful and easy way to get your chemical balance in order. Let's look at the fourth one, which is a really important part. You can have these three but if you're not engaged in connecting the three together, you don't get the full benefit of the vibrant vitality triangle. And it literally, if you do this consciously and you just require 72 hours to connect the three together with these different actions, I mean, hey, we go away for a long weekend as a vacation. Just get, you can take, you can vacation in your own home for 72 hours and follow all of these practices. You know, and it's okay, you, you know, 72 hours, we can somehow manage, you know, staying away from friends and, and stuff and just really focusing on, on us, on ourselves. Um, you get back that vibrant vitality because you've harmonized the three balances. This, it, this is like what you're connecting the three. It's like a medical engineering <laughs> activity that you're engaged in. The fifth one is all about timing. The circadian timing that is talked about, it's written about, you know, it's um, research has shown that vast major majority of children who, where, who are birthed through natural, in natural ways are born between, between you know, like 1, 1 40, 1 30 a.m. to 6 a.m. There's heart attacks, strokes, often, the vast majority of those occur between 6.30 a.m. to 12 noon. You know, suicides, a vast majority of the, I mean, this is research, it's not, I'm not transmitting this, this is research that you can actually get. Suicides often between 12 noon and 2.30 p.m. is where that's, this is tremendous depletion of this happy hormone that takes place. And there's a science behind all of this. Sneezing, stuffy nose, uh, neuropathic uh, happens often in, in the morning. People go into the sneezing spray that happens. Neuropathic pains often gets ag get aggravated at night. I mean, these are just some mysteries of human chemistry. It's all to do with our circadian rhythm. 
And it's something to do with the time of sunrise, position of the moon, and the law of gravity, these three pieces coming together. And if you can find a way and you know, by ha harmonizing these three balances is, is the way where you are able to address these three forms and that can enable you to get relief from chronic conditions and e even provide a way of self-healing yourself. Consciously working with sunrise and sunset and the gravity of the earth really helps massively. And many of the things that I've already talked about actually do address these things. I've talked about the skin as the second kidney. You have a second heart. This is the sixth one. The sixth one is activating, consciously activating your second heart to support the heart that is up here. And it's it's um it's it could be referred to as vasostimulation or therapy, which is to do with your like um vasodilation, but blood blood vessel expands or vaso constriction, blood vessel contracts by vasodilation, managing that vasodilation, you know, which is to do with dilating and con constricting as necessary, as required by your system is a way in which you can really support yourself. Now, how do you do all of that? What are the what are the things that you can have access to that support you with this? You know, one thing is ginger and garlic, for example. So ginger, if you were to chew ginger, you know, and your, you, your eyes start watering because it feels like a lot, but what is it actually doing? It really supports vasodilation. You know, if you're having this, a, a heart heart condition like heart attacks coming on chewing on ginger nitrous o nitric oxide is released and the blood vessel dilates opens up garlic does the same thing but not everybody eats garlic and it's actually much harder to chew on it so what it does is it switches on your your body i mean there's there are times where uh, someone is has had a condition and they fainted. So now you can't get them to chew ginger. The thing that supports that condition is uh, uh, is is cayenne pepper. And you can buy cayenne oil, you know, like oil from this this particular type of red chili. And if you just put a couple of drops under the tongue, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> crazy, it burns you crazily. However, when someone has fainted out of dizziness and there's something that could be going on that's, uh, that would help the dilation of his vessel, you literally put a couple of drops of that cayenne oil. It prevents you from having a heart attack before it even happens because it immediately dilates those blood vessels. So that, this, is, this is just one way of doing it. The, when you are able to control the, your, your vaso dilation or constriction, it supports you to, to act when your body is going through emergencies. So here's how it, it, it functions. The heart that we have here, right? It pulls, um, you know, it, it, it pulls the blood up and it pumps the blood down, that happens. Now we are going around walking vertically. Now there are times, let's say, you know, it happens quite a lot when someone is standing for a long time, uh, they just faint and we say, oh, heat stroke or whatever else they might say. But one of the things that's happening is that that blood circulation isn't happening in the way it is, it is meant to when you're standing for a long time. So when someone falls, you don't have to pump them with anything. When they fall, they're just connecting to gravity again. The heart is, is down. The blood starts to flow again, and they'll be back by themselves. 
Don't have to rush in picking them up. You can just let them be there because the heart is coming back into normal function again. Now, this is where you can actually work with your second heart. What is your second heart? Your calf muscle. Your calf muscles are your second heart. And you have two of them. Because in the center of your calf muscle is this vein, the reticular vein, that really supports you. So it, making sure that you have ways in which you move this calf muscle. So when you're just standing in one place for a long time, that movement isn't happening of your calf muscle. So you have your, you're standing in one place, the heart is doing its thing, it's sort of, but it requires some added support. So when you start, when you move your calf muscle, now how can you do it if your, your, your job calls you to just be in one place? You can tap. And if, if a lot of us from the corona times have started sitting down and working on computers for long stretches of time, I do that all the time. How do I get my calf muscles to move? I can't be moving when I'm doing a six hour long session. I tap. So I'm like sitting down and I've got my heels uh, on, the, you know, duck to the floor. My toes go up, toes go down, heels go up. Heels go down, toes go up like that. I just keep doing like this. Now you can't even necessarily tell that I'm doing it and I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now, you know, and that gets the calf muscles to move. You're supporting your main heart. If something, and, and the heart is pumping all the time, if it gets that little bit of that extra support, your heart health transforms dramatically. Heart plays a very important role in the context of electrical balance harmonization. Another way of doing it is if you bring your second heart close to your, to your first heart, there are certain yoga postures that can do it. Or if you're sitting down, you, you, you know, you can just, you can stretch your legs in front of you and then just pull them, you know, towards you where your knees are bent. You're bringing it close to your heart. That helps. So connecting your second heart to your normal heart is a, is a very, very important function that you can do. It feels like weird that something like this is going to support your heart health and it does. Pumping action that I'm talking about, heels down, toes up, toes down, heels up, right? Like that, like that, like that. You can do it standing up. And sure enough, walking absolutely does that. Sometimes uh, when I'm teaching people, I say, okay, stretch your legs in front of you and you may be on the bed and you twitch your toes. You'll find it actually really stretches your calf muscles. Breathe in, pull your toes in, breathe out, release your toes stretches your calf muscles. If you're on long haul flights, I've done so much work, we could do a whole session on this because I do long haul flights. You know, the, the most dangerous thing to do, your normal heart and the second heart are disconnected. But if you can, I use my time on flights to meditate and really get my second heart working very well. The seventh one really is to do with using pressure as medicine. So by creating a differential of pressure from time to time, once, twice, three times a week, and you can do that with hot water immersion. When you go into the bathtub, there's a part of you that is inside the bathtub. There's the pressure with, of water is high, uh, that's there. Um, that really helps. Swimming helps. Uh, aerobics helps. So water aerobics helps massively because that pressure differential is there. Part of your body is at a different pressure than another part of your body. That really helps. The combination in a hot water immersion, it's a combination of water, heat, and gravity. In a swimming pool, it's not, there's no, not necessarily heat, but the pressure differential is there. That helps quite massively. There's so much more that I've written to talk about it, but I think that we are, we are up with time. And you've got many, many things. Wherever you're at, you will be able to address getting mm. getting this this mm. uh, vibrant vitality triangle harmonized. Over to you, Sam. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And a couple of things I just want to say quickly. When we were talking about our sipping and sipping, I was looking at all of our peeps. 
and I was not seeing sipping and I was just thinking about it. And just as I was really thinking, guys, start sipping. Linda picked up her glass and started drinking a little sip and then a little later, a little sip. So I, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> so, guys, when you come to Manu, bring your glasses <laughs> and not plastic, please. Um, Another quick question. And I know we have to go, but you were talking about the third skin being the third uh, kidney. And I think next time we may speak of the second kidney, because I don't remember, because I know we have our actual kidney, which is number one. And then skin is three. We have two kidneys, two kidneys and a third. Oh, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> I'll do the math better next time. And, and remember, <laughs> Sunny, remember, Sunny, people survive on one kidney. So each one is yeah. really, you know, fully competent. And we have two, and we have a third one. And then we do just have one heart. So thank you for the math and lesson on that. Two, and <laughs> we have two hearts, two hearts, this heart. Right. And, and our calf muscles. And our calf. Yeah, yeah. But I, yes, ex indeed, indeed. And so guys, I, I mean, I, this was really, really uh, helpful. I have so many notes. I'm sure all of you guys do. If you don't, gosh, so sorry. <laughs> and also, you know, I would love to ask you, Manu, if you do have a way of maybe jotting down the creating natural uh, water, the living water with the stones and twigs and stuff, um, because I would love to do that. I have a thing about water and buying Kagan machine, this and that, all the things. And if okay. I could just do it naturally. And I actually brought water um, salt back from the Kalahari in uh, South Africa. That's yeah, wonderful. Extremely powerful. So I shall be using that. And so I know we must come to our end Guys, this has been a pleasure. I always feel so honored to be able to be the um, sidekick host. <laughs> and we will be here next week for number 33, which will be, of course, very auspicious. <clears throat> Excuse me. And until next time, thank you so much, Manu. And thank you all of you guys for joining us and being so loyal to this practice and using your ripple effect in the world, because I know you all do. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time. Yes. Much until, love. The next time will be 36, by the way. It's 35. Oh, it, oh my gosh, I did our math wrong again. Oh, my goodness, I must, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have another sip of water and get it Indeed, off. indeed, I shall. Until next time. Okay, thank you. It's, it's all about brain health, the next three oh. things. It's all about brain. It's pretty amazing, the stuff that's coming through. I'm glad we have a whole session on brain. That will be we have, we have phenomenal. Three sessions coming up, Sunny. Oh, on brain, both <laughs> on two. Brain. Ooh, fantastic! Okay, guys, so let's be here next week. And next week is sort of, um, by the way, is in America is Fourth of July sort of situation. Okay. Okay. So, so we'll see how it all pans out. Maybe. Okay. So everyone, next week we do the week after. Yeah, yep. so just sort of stay tuned, guys, to see what ends up happening. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.